All right, now that you've learned how to do some of the descriptive analytics with text um, analyses, let's do some prediction. So what I'm going to get uh, to is this point right here. We have the Twitter data up. We're pre-processing it just the way we always have been. Uh, we're selecting columns. Um, let's go ahead and adjust that one here. Come on. There we go. All right, for select columns, what I have is the pre-processed text. Um, I want to predict retweet count. So I'm going to include the cloud score sentiment of the tweet, whether or not the tweet itself is a reshare, and the uh, gender. You know, we could use include some more stuff. How about... How about state? Uh, city might be a little bit too detailed, but let's include state in there as a categorical variable. All right, so our clean missing data, I'm just telling it to eliminate, remove any rows where the pre-processed text is missing. So let's go back to our feature hashing tool that we learned previously. So this one, uh, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Right here, feature hashing. So if you remember, uh, we select the column to be hashed. That's going to be obviously our, uh, well, I'm going to have to process to get to that point. So let me run to this spot right here. So uh, we're going to do the pre-processed text field, but then it gives us some options. So hashing bit size, this refers to basically the number of um, columns that could potentially be created uh, for, uh, for text fields. So when it looks at a tweet, or actually it's going to look at all of the tweets and it's going to divide up according to this right here n grams equal to two means it's going to look for bigrams or two word pairs and all unigrams single word pairs and come up with as many of those as it can within 10 bits which is going to be 2 to the 10th which is 2 4 8 16 32 64 128 256 512 1024 possible fields so that should be enough to capture, since most of us don't use more than 5,000 words in the English language, that's 1,000 should be enough to capture the number of meaningful uh, word chunks, especially after we've run this pre-processed text to eliminate stop words and do perform lemmatization and all those other things that simplify and reduce the text down. So that should do it right there. All right, so after feature hashing, what we want to do is, uh, remember a long time ago when we learned feature selection, how to choose variables. I told you filter-based feature selection is good, permutation feature importance is better, and PCA is best, but that one depends on the context and what type of variables you have. And I said, I can't ever think of a reason why we might want to use filter-based feature selection. Well, that's because I hadn't learned this text analytics yet. This is the perfect case. Uh, here's why. The filter-based feature selection says, we'll choose a dependent variable. Let's go ahead and pick one. Oh, I can't do that until I connect the dots here. Choose a dependent variable, which we're going to make, we're trying to predict the number of retweets, so retweet count. And it's going to calculate one of these scores for every independent variable, including all 1,024 text chunks against the dependent variable. But then the nice feature that this thing has that permutation feature importance doesn't have is the ability to say, okay, automatically give me, for example, the 10 best Pearson correlation, give me the, the 10 variables with the highest Pearson correlation, or let's do the Fisher score. That's what Microsoft recommends for text. So automatically give us the variables with the 10 highest Fisher scores. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, let's see what it says here, value required. I thought I just did that. I guess it resets it when I change the scoring method. All right, retweet count. Perfect. So now we have a way to automatically pull in new text each time, especially if I connect this data set to a live database pulling in Twitter feeds. Clean the missing data. It'll rehash the features every time I retrain this and then pick again the top 10 variables. So what do we need next to make this work? Same stuff we always use. Let's get a split. I'm running out of space. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to move this stuff. Whoops. Nope. Turn this on move all this stuff over give me to about right there turn that back off come on move this one up here just so oh no 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 grab this guy pull it up to here i know this is kind of messy i'm just trying to fit all on one screen for you okay split data train model
All right, I'm gonna, now I'm really making life hard on myself. I left split with the defaults here, half for testing, half for training. Uh, let's see here, okay. Score. So for train, let's select our dependent variable again. Uh, retweet count, check. Uh, evaluate. And then we need, of course, a prediction method. So um, what's our dependent variable? Retweet count. Is it numeric or categor categorical? It's numeric. Therefore, what we want is a regression model. Not classification, not clustering. Right here, regression. So do you remember which regression uh, formula is supposedly perfect for predicting counts because that's what retweet count is. It's going to be a whole number, an integer from, it'll never be negative. It'll be from zero to infinity. So if you remember, it's this French guy right here, Poisson or Poison, sounds funny to say. Anyway, this is meant for count-based predictions. So let's give this one a shot and see how it does. All right, I'm slaughtering this. Let's see if I can fix it. Yeah, oh well, I think you guys remember the idea. Okay, let's go ahead and run this. Get it running, and I'll pause. Okay, that's all done. Let's take a look here. Let's start with the feature hashing as a reminder. So we get uh, all of our original variables here, plus here's our pre-processed text, and now here's our list of... Uh, oh, we have a lot more. I must have done... Um, 2048. So I must have done 11 there. Bits. Anyway, uh, 3079 columns, a bunch of zeros and ones for whether or not each of those uh, bits, those features are included in each text. Filter based feature selection. I don't know. There's much we need. Actually, we can just visualize this one and it'll tell us uh, which ones. There we go. Uh, state. Oh, here's our problem is the feature hashing worked on each of our categorical variables. That's the problem. Um, let me go back and fix that. I'll say, so, okay, so click on feature hashing, launch column selector, and I forgot to tell this one that we just want, there we go, let's get rid of state and gender. We just want pre-processed text. All right, sorry about that. Let me do this one more time. All right, let's take a look now. So this time, filter-based feature selection should be just the pre-processed text, perfect. So look how it automatically, for us, decided all right, whether or not it's a reshare is the number one predictor of retreat count, so that's why it's in this position. Then whatever pre-processed text hashing feature 535 is, I wish it would tell us, uh, that is the, the next most important variable. As we go through, there should be 10 total. So it did all of the work for us to choose, here's 707, to choose which of both the hashing uh, fields created and the other independent variables we selected out of those which 10 had the biggest effect on retweet count. So let's see what kind of, uh, what our trained model looked like. Okay, so here's our feature weights. Uh, yep, so this, whatever that text is, had the biggest effect, then reshare. Let me get a couple that we included that were close to zero, so we could potentially trim those out and take that uh, feature, uh, this one down to eight instead of 10, but let's see what kind of evaluate model we get. Okay, this is awesome right here. 20% is really, really good. Uh, that makes me pretty happy. That's a great R squared or coefficient of determination uh, to predict the number of times something got retweeted. So uh, this is how you use the extract. Um, oh, no, I'm sorry. This is supposed to say this is how we use feature hashing with prediction.